Seal spoke about current capabilities. We do have particle beam weapons. I've used them. We did underwater tests off the coast of California. The capabilities are awesome. You can knock down a satellite, a ship, a plane, anything. In the global race for new technology, it appears that Tesla's death beam is not the only secret invention that supposedly disappears when he dies. On July 4th, 1976, the celebration of America's bicentennial, a strange new signal is monitored on ham radio frequencies. This high-pitched chattering is dubbed the woodpecker signal by the Central Intelligence Agency. They have no idea what it is, but they are able to triangulate its source to a Soviet transmitter in Latvia. The Soviets had experimented with creating artificial aurora not sure what their objective was, but uh, I think it was probably uh, designed to prove that you could uh, project very low frequency energy over the horizon, over great distances, and cause certain effects. You can induce virtually any effect that a chemical can cause in a living system with a, um, an external, primarily extremely low frequency magnetic field. My personal feeling is that primarily, I think, it was designed to communicate through submarines. On July 13, 1977, at 9.19 p.m., the woodpecker signal abruptly stops. A strange corona forms around Edison Electric power generators servicing New York City, and the entire city is suddenly plunged into darkness, creating chaos and confusion. The blackout is similar in its effects to Tesla's Colorado Springs experiment that overloads and sets ablaze the local electrical power plant. Uh, you know, things start to brown out. To the, uh, we started seeing very strange things happen to New Yorkers who went berserk. Uh, it was literally absolutely dangerous to be there in New York City. And it was a headache for police and, and who knows, all the security people around. Was it Tesla's secret that electricity could alter the mental state of human beings? If so, was that secret delivered into the wrong hands? And who is responsible for the Tesla-inspired program known as HARP? A government project some experts believe is the first stage of an entirely new phase in weapons technology. War or peace? Which does science serve best? Tesla described himself not as an inventor but as a discoverer. But with discovery comes responsibility. Tesla knew this when he developed HARP technology, and many think that his fear of what might happen if HARP fell into the wrong hands motivated him to keep his discovery under wraps. HARP exists because Tesla theorized back in the 30s that he would be able to stimulate the magnetic field of the Earth in such a way that he would actually be able to create a shield around the city. HARP is. Um, basically a design experiment in terms of atmospheric physics where a large array of antennas, it's not just one antenna, it's a very large array, it covers several acres, um, are broadcasting into the ionosphere of the planet a very, very complex series of waveforms. And these waveforms are designed to specifically couple in with the ionosphere, which is a resonant Cavity. This concept involves heating up the ionosphere in a manner similar to a giant microwave oven. That a small input, like a pulse of a certain number of watts in, can create, create a large output because whether accidentally or intentionally, it's possible to tap into this sea of energy around us. It surrounds us and goes through our bodies and is everywhere throughout space. HARP's original designer conceives it as a shield for missile defense that can fry the circuitry of incoming bombs. HARP was designed to, uh, for a number of applications. It really was not set up as a weapon. Uh, if you read the patents, I was thinking of ways to use it defensively. He also claims that by superheating portions of the upper atmosphere, HARP can affect global weather patterns, a concept Tesla was ridiculed for nearly a century earlier. One of the real dangers of HARP 
is that we, have con we concentrate with HARP in one very small area of the ionosphere. We create a lightning rod effect. We create a lightning rod that can distort the magnetosphere of the planet, which is the magnetic shield of the planet. Not only are you sending energy into the ionosphere, but you're providing a path for energy to come back down out of the ionosphere. The electrons and energy will come from all over the ionosphere to that one point, and it will strike the ground in a bolt that is a hundred times greater than any lightning bolt imaginable. Kind of like three or four Mount St. Helens volcanoes going off each second. The true power of HARP technology is not yet known, and there is no civilian monitoring agency. The possibility that HARP may be capable of enormous planetary disruptions, including weather changes, global warming, or even slowing the Earth's orbit by shifting the shape of the ionosphere, may tell us why Tesla suppressed the blueprints for this invention. He stopped his power shield defense project in 1905 because he realized that such a resonant system of five towers around the globe could cause a tremendous destruction of humankind. Not long after, Tesla's money runs out. His main supporters either die or sever relations. As his anonymity increases, he continues with even more esoteric research. He was very much concerned with being able to utilize the phenomenon of resonance to do certain things, not the least of which was to uh, destroy certain materials. And that was evidenced later on by that uh, experiment he did on Wall Street where uh, the new building, steel building, was going up. And uh, he tried out one of his uh, resonators, nothing more than a, a mechanical vibrator that was battery operated, and set up a a resonance in the steel beams to the point where it kept building up like pushing a kid on a swing, you know, and keep pushing and a little push will take it a lot further every time. And he almost brought the building down, uh, it scared the people who were working on it. They thought they were having an earthquake. And they went down and called the police and everything else. Tesla got <laughs> a little bit scared and picked up his equipment, <laughs> put it in his pocket, and went home. <laughs> he had one other unfortunate incident, which today we would laugh at, but was very serious at the time. He picked up radio signals from space. You know, we know today, of course, that uh, planets radiate uh, RF noise and so forth. But when he announced this, it, was, uh, it just caused a sensation, and all the scientists said immediately, what a kook, you know, what an idiot. There were rumors you went to Colorado Springs in order to contact Mars, is that true? I never intended to. However, I recorded certain electrical impulses of unknown origin, and these were repeated at constantly timed intervals. It's possible they were a kind of signal from space. And did you in turn send them a message? Ask the Martians that question. No more questions, please. They got to thinking, I'm sure, well, he's talking crazy now. He's feeding pigeons in the park, and he's got this crazy idea of transmitting signals to Mars. And Tesla is so advanced in his thinking, so sensitive and eccentric, that few of his colleagues understand his work. He is perceived as snobbish and overconfident. He was ostracized, I think, primarily because of his difference and because of his radical statements and because of his pronouncements of great systems. They didn't have the foggiest notion of what he was talking about. Nikola Tesla saw many of his inventions scrutinized, then adopted by the military. However, it becomes apparent that as a citizen of the planet, Tesla ultimately serves a much higher authority. He met 